My name is Ian Clement and this is part of our Fab Shop Doctor 101 series uh, looking at tracking. This new tracking uh, was uh, first public released in the uh, 2022 uh, 1.126 version of Fab Shop. So any version you have, uh, this version or later, you have this now available to you. First thing you have to do is actually enable Fab Shop. So with the software loaded, uh, if you go to the setup uh, tab on the left here and options this brings you up to this screen and a little checkbox down here enable tra tracking once that's checked any future jobs that are input will basically uh, have a uh, will be uploaded to the cloud and therefore can be tracked from that point on the second part of this is actually enabling uh, or putting a, a barcode or QR code uh, onto the labels themselves I'm just going to go into the designer reports to do this. Oh, sorry, designer labels on here. Um, this is, I uh, say, so based on the label format you currently have, you may need to tweak these around a little bit, uh, make some adjustments. Uh, you don't need a very a particularly large uh, QR code, uh, but you will need a little bit of space on the label. So basically, based on how your label's laid out, you know, that can impact where you're actually going to put this thing. Uh, also thing to note here, make sure you do choose your actual printed labels. Uh, FabShop does allow you to have multiple label formats. So you want to make sure that the uh, QR code that you add is on a, the label format you're going to use. So in my case, I'm just going to use the standard ones. It obviously doesn't matter which ones you have to use there. So I jump over to the designer. This is my current layout for the uh, label. Uh, I've got a little bit of space down here. Uh, you don't need much space for the QR code, uh, but you do need some Q, uh, some space off there. So if I choose the barcode 2D and hit enable, I get this added to the top left. It always defaults to the top left. I can now grab that, and I'm just going to put that in a blank spot. Now, it probably is a little bit too small as is, so I'm just going to drag that out a little way. I'd say try and keep it relatively square, uh, not super important, but uh, relatively square off that. That's the process of adding that in there. Now you do have, this is adding to the metal label, so basically every single piece of duct that's printed, uh, that's cut on the plasma, for example, will have this QR code on there. If I want that on my, um, uh, uh, let's say on my ID labels, I'd need to come down to here. Let me just save what I've actually done there. This has got the old 1D barcode on. So I'm just going to disable that one. Enable the 2D one. Again, so it's always located at the top uh, left. Drag that down and just say make it a little bit bigger than the default. Uh, these don't need to be particularly large. Uh, you'll be amazed at how, uh, how easy these actually scan uh, coming in there. Now the QR code on... This is the ID label, so I'm going to get one of these labels per finished fitting. Uh, the metal labels, let me just save that one, uh, I'm going to get one per piece. So, for example, that square, el or the, uh, square elbow, I'd end up with four labels. The advantage of the four labels is, obviously, it doesn't matter which way up the, the, the piece is. I can probably very easily scan it. Uh, also, if one of the labels gets damaged, I can sort of scan one of the other labels off there. Uh, you may want to consider doing both. Uh, the metal part is probably the most common, but it's certainly valid to have these on the ID levels as well. That is the setup required for uh, tracking in FabShop. Uh, from this point on, every new job, old existing jobs won't be, will not be part of this, but any new job I enter from now will actually be registered in the cloud and the tracking side will pick up from there. Uh, a future video will actually show you uh, usage uh, of the actual scanning side of things.